Now, I don't know about you and where you live in your neck of the woods, but for us here in East Tennessee in these Appalachian Mountains, springtime really gets us a stirring. We get excited for so many things. Everything starts blooming and it is so beautiful. And it's just a reminder to us people up here in these Appalachian Mountains that maybe things ain't so bad after all. We could live in the city. And then the wet season starts. And that's when we get an itch for the ever-elusive morel mushroom. Or as we like to call them, a dry land fish. And we get to stir it and we head on out into these beautiful woods that I call my home, Appalachia. Now just about everybody, at least here in Appalachia anyway, know of these here what we call dry land fish, or my granny always called them a miracle. Because I guess sometimes it's a miracle if you ever find one. But if you know what you're looking for, you can stumble across a few. So now we're going to talk about the morel mushroom. Now this is the morel mushroom. Now there are several different varieties, but I'm just going to talk about the ones that grow here in my particular neck of the woods. But I've heard and read that they grow all over the United States of America. Now here is how our good friend Google defines and describes the morel mushroom. I'll let you read this for yourself because there is no way this old hillbilly can pronounce hardly any of these words. <laughs> now I've got some footage of me actually finding some of these just yesterday. But before I show you that, I feel like I need to give you some of my tried and true tested ways and secrets. Yeah, I'm going to share them with you. Of finding this delicious mushroom. The first thing I want to tell you is because I feel like it's the most important thing. Is you always want to be on the lookout for what they call a false morel. That's the one on the right. See that little bitty on the left? That's the real deal. And a good way to tell that you've got your hands on one of these is if you cut it open and it's not hollow, it's not a morel. And you do not want to eat one of these. It'll make you sick as a, sick as a dog if it don't kill you. You're welcome. Now, I have heard of people eating these, but I don't know about you, but I ain't taking no chances on it. Now, I did find this little thing right here online. Now, you feel free to print this off, honey, if you need to, and take it in the woods with you. And if people see you and they start laughing at you, you tell them to talk to me about it. Now, I've got two grown children, and I taught them how I was taught on how to tell the difference. I'd take them in the woods, and I'd find one, the real deal, and I'd hand it to them. I say, now, when you, when you find one that matches this right here, then you got the real deal. And that's how they learned. And they're still alive to this day. So if you got your kids, your grandkids, well, you go out and you find the real deal. Make sure you got the real thing. And you do just that. You hand it to them and let them carry it around. It ain't going to hurt it none. And they'll learn too. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to focus on more these days, in my opinion. That's just me. And I'm just an old hillbilly. What do I know? Now that that rant is over with, we're going to start with some signs. And when, possibly where, I'm not telling you my secret spots. You can forget that. <laughs> but we're going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try to help you out a little bit. And tell you when, what, and where, and whatever I can remember to tell you what to look for. So you can go find your own dry land fish. Now, one of the first things that I'm always on the lookout for is this plant right here. Now, here in, in East Tennessee, we call this Mayapple. I don't know what you call it or even if you got it in your neck of the woods, 
But if this plant right here, you see it up right here about this size, you can almost bet your morel mushrooms is up as well. Now another thing that makes your mushroom hunting more promising is if you'll wait till after a good soaking rain, a steady, not a flood, just a good old steady rain like this right here. And you wait about, probably about two days after that rain and head on out to the woods. Usually what I do when I get out in them woods is I'll start looking for something that kind of looks like this right here, maybe a fallen tree. Now these mushrooms are not going to be right up against the tree, but they will be in the general area most of the time. Now if you've also got apple trees in your yard for some odd reason here in East Tennessee, I don't, I can't speak for nowhere else, but I've got some apple trees, you know, stay out of my mushroom patch out here in the back and these mushrooms like to come up around them old apple trees for some reason so you might want to check that too now for some of you that are might be new to mushroom hunting us i guess i can call myself an old timer us older hillbillies you know we already know this i'm kind of weird about it if, if you can find you a place that's been burnt you keep your eye on it. Wait about two or three years. About two years is what I've learned. And go back and it'll be absolutely loaded. I think some people even call these a fire mushroom. Because they, they like that. It makes the spores pop or something. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. But I tell you what I do have. I do got me a big old notebook over here. Wrote down of when certain woods was on fire. What time. What date. And how long it burnt. Mind your business. I'm serious about the mushrooms, I'm just telling you. <laughs> so now with all that out of the way, that's about all I can think of right now. I'm going to show you the footage of me and my little dog Oscar out mushroom hunting. And we did find just enough for a little old mess of them. And I'm also going to show you how to cook them, but that's in another video. Now what I did here is I actually did go back to one of them places that burnt about two years ago. See, I remembered I had it wrote down. Made it a point to go there, and sure enough, there they was. Here's that footage. For those of you who are wondering about the color of this one, it's fine. It's what we call a black morale. Now, I'm trying to show you until you want to break them off. You don't want to pull them up by the roots. You want to break them off. You want to leave that root in the ground, honey, so you can go back next year get you some more of these delicious little boogers right here. Now these right here, if you can see them right here, is a yellow morel. Now from what I know, at least here again in East Tennessee, these are always at a lower altitude. The black one I found there earlier in that footage was probably at about 2,000 feet above sea level. These they're kind of down in the valley. And if you're if you're a hillbilly, you know. But look, I found a great old biggin right here. And this is in that burn spot. It burned about three years ago. Look at them. With none there last year. But look at them now. Mm -mm -mm. Now, while I was out traipsing around in the woods, I come across this little plant right here, see them fuzzy leaves. We've always, I've always known it by mulling. And people make tea out of it here. I've drunk my fair share of it and had it all rubbed all over me too. Because if you got a cut or a bug bite or stung by a bee, right here was what was getting rubbed all over you as a child growing up here in East Tennessee. These Appalachian Mountains. Well, that's it, fellas, for this here edition of I don't know, being a hillbilly and the morel mushroom. I hope I've helped you out. I hope you go out in the woods. Go out in the woods. Log off the internet. Let your feet touch the grass. Just breathe a little bit. It's all going to be okay. Double guns, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>